An immersion blender is a great compact tool for blending hot soups right in the pot on the stovetop. It can also make smoothies, whipped cream, and even emulsify salad dressings and mayonnaise. Kate and I both have immersion blenders at home and we love them. Today, we're gonna to give you an in-depth look at immersion blenders. We're gonna talk about what to look for, compare them to countertop blenders, share our best immersion blender tips, and answer your most frequently asked questions so you can decide whether to get one for yourself. First up, Lisa with our immersion blender buying guide. Immersion blenders typically have the same two components, the handle that houses the motor and controls and a blade that's at the end of a shaft. It's usually detachable for cleaning. Now the best immersion blenders get the job done efficiently and neatly and safely. All the blending is done directly in the pot. Now, some models are cordless and rechargeable using charging cables or docks. Some have accessories like whisk attachments and blending jars, and some even have chopping chambers with extra blades. They look like tiny food processors. We wanted to know what factors make the best immersion blenders. So we tested a full lineup and all their extra attachments. We made smoothies, we pureed soup, we whipped cream, we made mayonnaise, chopped onions, among other tests, and we cleaned them in between every use. Here's what we learned. If you're in the market for an immersion blender, you want a few things. First, simple, intuitive controls. You want just one or two easy to interpret power buttons that take only one hand to use. Our favorites had two buttons for two simple speed options or single buttons that adjusted the speed as we increased or decreased pressure. Some of these were really unnecessarily complicated. They had speed selection knobs on the tops of their handles, so we had to pause and use both hands while we were blending. Fewer speeds actually made blending more efficient. Instead of wasting time choosing between up to 15 speeds, some of those didn't change much. Others had annoying unlock buttons designed for safety, but we had to press them every time we started to blend or if we paused and wanted to resume blending. Our favorites had well-designed grips that comfortably fit many different hand sizes. They were only five and a half inches in circumference or less. They were coated in soft, grippy plastic or silicone so that prevented slipping. We wanted lightweight, compact construction. You have to hold this up while you use it. So light models kept us from getting tired. We really preferred models that weighed around two pounds or less. Some were much heavier. We also liked the ones that are shorter because that put our hands closer to what we were blending. They just felt more in control. Our favorites were 15 or 16 inches long and that still keeps you away from the hot soup but long enough to reach the bottom of a big pot that's full. You want small bell-shaped blade guards. The blade is inside here. This shape helped food flow freely around and into the guards to get to the blade. There were some that were flat and they just trapped food outside the guard and away from the blades. Some of the guards had vents around the top of this bell shape, and that just made a big mess. They sprayed food out and splattered everything. Another nice thing to have is an eject button. So you just push this button and it comes off. And that makes it so much easier to clean the immersion blender. You don't wanna get this part wet. There's some that don't even come off and that's a pain or they're complicated to detach. That simple button on and off and you're done. This is our ATK recommended winner by Braun. We've recommended this model for more than a decade. It's lightweight with a comfortable grip, so it's super easy to maneuver. It's ventless, it has a bell-shaped blade guard that kept food flowing freely, and it prevented splattering. These two speeds are really easily controlled by two simple buttons that we could operate with one hand. And both speeds were powerful enough to pulverize frozen pineapple. This immersion blender would be a great addition to your kitchen. So a lot of people have asked us, how do immersion blenders stack up against your standard countertop blender? You can use an immersion blender for some of the same tasks that you'd lug out your full-size blender for. But, and this is a big difference, when you've cooked soup in a big pot like a Dutch oven and you want to puree some of the ingredients to thicken up its texture or make the whole soup smooth, it is so much easier to just stick an immersion blender right in the pot, one and done. Immersion blenders are also easier to clean and store than countertop blenders. They can go right in a drawer and they often cost much less. The downside, they don't always blend quite as smoothly as our ATK recommended winning countertop blenders. Our favorite immersion blenders blended our testing smoothie. We call it our testing smoothie. It has orange juice, raw kale, and frozen pineapple chunks. And it did a good job, but it left more fibrous bits of kale behind. Now, another question we get a lot, what about the attachments? Are these worth it? The whisk attachments 
attachment. These are for whipping cream or egg whites. They let more airflow in when you're whipping cream, so it actually reached stiff peaks about 30 to 45 seconds faster than using the regular blender attachment. But they're also kind of messy, and we wouldn't actually go out of our way to pay for a model that comes with a whisk. We felt similarly about the chopping jars that look like little food processors. They're sort of convenient, but there's space for like one small onion at a time. You could use them for really small tasks like half batches of pesto. Eh, you don't need it. One blender is sold in a set that included five additional attachments, including a can opener, a spice grinder, and a wine opener. And they're all powered by the same cordless handle. This thing performed poorly as an immersion blender and none of the other attachments worked well enough to make it useful. Now we also get asked, does the wattage of the immersion blender matter? Short answer, no. We did not notice any connection between higher wattage and faster or more powerful blending. Models with lower wattage blended just as efficiently and thoroughly as those with higher wattages. Blending performance was the most important factor, but it wasn't the wattage that made the difference. It was the design of the machine. So I have one of these. I love it. I use it just for soups and the occasional whipped cream, and I th still think it's worth it just for that. I have a food processor. I have a stand mixer. I have a blender. This takes up no space, uh, no time. Just pop this thing off and wash it in two seconds, and it goes back in the drawer, and you're done. It does a lot of tasks that you would have to get bigger appliances for and spend more money on. So worth it. So that's everything you need to know if you're thinking about buying an immersion blender. Now here's Kate with some tips, some answers to your immersion blender questions, and more. And if you can, drop a like on the video. It really helps out the channel. Immersion blenders are great. I love mine. I had one for years before I bought a countertop blender, and I still use it a few times a week. But to get the most out of it, there's a few best practices you should follow. Here are some things we learned about using, storing, and cleaning immersion blenders during testing. Find the right container. An immersion blender's blade guard always needs to be fully submerged when blending. Make sure to use a narrow enough pot or container to provide some depth. Restaurant chefs like to use immersion blenders with cambros or deli containers, and many people blend directly in large cans of whole tomatoes for a quick puree. Just be sure to pour off some of the liquid first to avoid splatter. Many models, including our winner, also come with plastic blending jars that are perfect for lots of recipes beyond soup. The main way people use these at home is in their Dutch oven or pot. You can move the blender around, just make sure it's circulating, and just try not to drag it across the cooking surface. That way you'll avoid scratching it. Don't turn it on before you put it in a pot or remove it while it's still running. It will make a mess. It's all about the angles. If the container or pot you're blending in isn't deep enough, angle it so the food flows to one side. This gives the blender enough room to work and it ensures that you don't end up wearing your meal. And it's not just the container that should be tilted. Because food needs to be able to flow freely into the blade guard, angle the immersion blender slightly instead of holding it straight up and down. This way, the ingredients can circulate. Cord control is your best friend. A surprising number of models we tested didn't come with any cord wrap or cord organization method. If yours doesn't either, find yourself a sturdy rubber band to corral the cord and make storage that much easier. There are some safety tips too. Remember, these have little blades. They're sharp. Never touch the blade while the blending shaft is attached. If your immersion blender is fully assembled, you could accidentally turn it on while you're trying to clean the blade and nick your fingers or worse. When I'm using an immersion blender, I separate the two halves and unplug it before touching the blade. Always point the blade away from you. This might seem obvious, but it's important to keep the blade pointed downward and away from you at all times. You'd be surprised at how easy this key tip is to forget when you're working quickly. When it comes to cleaning immersion blenders, rinse the blending shaft as soon as you're done. Although many immersion blender shafts are dishwasher safe, such as our winners, it's still helpful to rinse them as soon as you're finished blending. Otherwise, food can dry and harden on the blades and become a pain to clean, even in the dishwasher. My favorite cleaning tip is to blend some hot and soapy water with your immersion blender. The blending action helps all the soap circulate and gets everything really clean. Just don't get the handle wet. It houses the motor, so you should always keep it dry. Any water can damage it and could cause electrical injury. If it needs to be cleaned, all you have to do is wipe it down with a damp cloth. While these immersion blenders might not be as powerful as countertop blenders and as good for some things like smoothies, they're much more compact, they're usually less expensive, they're more convenient to use, and they can make a wide variety of recipes easier. We highly recommend you try an immersion blender. 
For more information about immersion blenders and other kitchen gear, check out the links below or go to americastestkitchen.com. Do you think you'll get an immersion blender or stick with a traditional blender? What are some of your favorite blender recipes? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.